All right, everybody, we're back working on the car again, working on the Willwood brake kit. So I got the driver's side already installed just to see how I was gonna go before I filmed any of this. Uh, it wasn't too bad, fairly straightforward. Um, Willwood actually has a good video on YouTube already on how to do this. And then their instructions are, you can follow along easy enough. Um, so I got new hubs here from Revington TR over in England. Um, these are very nicely machined. I've already checked the run out on these and it's one one thousandth all the way around this thing. Um, so pretty impressive. And the the discs themselves have about five thousandths of run out in this, in this direction is what I'm talking about. Um, got new bearings in here. I use Timken bearings um, and their seals. New cotter pin, new bolt there. Um, the kit comes with a stainless steel, or excuse me, a stainless braided brake line. That's all hooked up. Um, then hooked up in the back here, excuse me. <laughs> but there's that fitting, it just uses a, it's got pipe threads on it and you thread in that 90 degree elbow and any other piece attaches there. Um, this is not filled up with brake fluid yet, so I can't comment on how well anything works yet, but I'll show you the other side. Um, and show you how all this goes together but you can see it's smooth action the other one on this side the bearings were totally destroyed um, so this sounds much better so let's go let's check out the disc and everything first so this is your brake disc it attaches to this black hat with these uh, t30 bolts if you end up buying this, make sure you have a strong bit because I managed to break two of them. Tight. They only go down to 30 foot pounds, but I don't know. I must have had cheap bits because they just rounded off in here. So something to think about if you decide to buy this kit. Um, I've already got the new bearing races installed on this side. Um, if there's any question about whether or not you can use a, a race kit to install these, you can. I've seen some videos where guys are tapping them in with a brass drift and I pretty much destroyed my drift trying to do that. But I happen to have one of these kits. Um, I got it from Napa years ago. It's the, uh, uh, there it is, bearing race and seal set. So that just sits on there and you pound on here and it drives that race straight home. So I did it on the front side too. So there's that front race installed. Um, I got new studs. I had these pressed in by a local shop. I didn't want to do that typical thing where you see on YouTube or on the internet where guys will take a lug nut and just basically drive it home and pull it through there. I just wasn't crazy about doing that. So they charged me 20 bucks to install eight of these. I didn't think that was too bad. So um, I also have this spacer kit. It was actually more of a reinforcing kit, which I, actually, which I got from Revington TR as well. Um, and it's designed to add strength to the spindles so you don't get that brake knockback that people talk about on the forums. Um, I don't know that I've ever experienced it, but I don't want to take any chances and I don't really want to pull this apart again. So I'll show you on the car how this works. So I've already got the rear bearings already in there because I've been playing with this, but there's a set of little spacers in here. Um, anywhere from one tenth of an inch all the way to three thousandths is the smallest one. Um, so there's some playing around with this. You have to put your certain amount of spacers in there, then you put on this piece, then the assembly goes over this, and then you put on your front wheel bearing, your washer, and your nut, torque it down to 50 foot pounds, and then check um, how much runout you have. And you should have three thousandths of play in there. That's that's their spec. Um, so let me show you how all that works. I'll get my dial indicator set up. I've already got, I've already figured out how many spacers I need for the sake of time. Um, this side took four, I, so I got, yeah, there's four spacers on this side and three on the other. So this one was a little bit different. This spindle sits a little bit tighter than the other side did. So there may be some imperfections in it. But either way, let me get that set up and I'll show you. Okay, so once you get your little spacer washers figured out, you set your dial indicator up on here. I happen to have a magnetic one I bought specifically for this job, but it just 
magnetizes to the brake disc and then I have the needle pushing against the end of the spindle here which is an exercise in futility because of the hole inside it sometimes it wants to fall inside there so it takes a second to set up but all you do is push back and forth on the hub or the brake and check out how much run out you have you're supposed to have anywhere from three to five thousandths and this has i'm right around three to four so it's within spec so that's good and this nut gets tightened down to 50 foot pounds rather than the traditional method of if we're using the regular hubs you just tighten it down until it's tight where there's no play and then you back it off basically one flat until you're able to put your split pin or cotter pin in there so it's a little different this is a little bit more tricky and i would say it takes a little bit more time but in the long run if it works better than whatever the extra half hour of work is worth it to me so let me get this taken off and we'll keep on keeping on all right i got the bearings all greased up and in there this is the rearmost bearing which would face towards the engine um i did use the seal here that timkin provides um i got these from good parts there's some controversy as to whether or not they'll fit but i can tell you they will um i put them in the freezer for a couple hours and I was able to pound those in there no problem um, and they fit just fine I elected to use those rather than the felt seals whether or not they're any better I have no idea so front bearings greased up I'm gonna get this on there and get it torqued down then we'll recheck the end float again and then uh, we'll go from there all right so now that the hubs and everything is installed on this caliper you have to install the elbow fitting here, which is 90 degree, and you have to wrap it in PTFE tape. The instructions aren't real clear on this, but it says, I went on Wilwood's website, they say to get it started hand tight until you can't do it hand tight anymore, and then another one and a half to three turns with a wrench. So I just use a half inch to turn this and then once you get it back on the car you're gonna to have to fine tune it based on how you want your hose to kind of sit so you can still get to these caliper bolts back here so let me tighten that up and then we'll get this going all right so passenger side is done it was too hard to film all this and try and work at the same time to especially get these caliper bolts on here because they require spacers to go in there which i don't know if you can see those little gold washers right there but there's spacer kits to make sure that the rotor is equidistant from both sides of the caliper. And I checked it and it is, and I've already got the pads and everything there and everything's spinning good. So this side is done. Brake line's connected back to the hard line, um, which is surprisingly easy. So the only thing left to do on these brakes at this point is to put the master cylinder back on, um, fill it with fluid, and then start to bleed it. And hopefully we have no leaks anywhere. Um, as far as what's to come on this car, I got a new radiator for it. Got an aluminum one from uh, Wizard Cooling that has the electric fan on it. Um, so I'm gonna replace that and hopefully tackle this overheating problem. Um, so we'll drain all the coolant out of here and go from there. And, this is probably going to be controversial, but I bought a fuel injection kit for this car from Ramtech, um, which arrived a couple days ago. So I'm really excited to get that installed and not have to worry about messing around with carburetors anymore. The good thing about the kit, for anybody who's hating on me right now, is that it's totally reversible. Um, you can always put these cars back on if you want to and take the manifold off. And it's not an overly difficult install. So uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll start on this cooling system sometime soon and I'll get another video up and I'll see you on the next one. Peace guys.